This is Mrs. Tomasevich, and today I'm going to talk about how to analyze and evaluate websites to be sure you get the best information possible. This is part of the eWise research process, and it falls under the investigate part, where you locate and find information to answer your essential questions. My essential question today is, why is it important to evaluate the source and validity of the information found on the web? Have you ever ordered something online and ended up with something that was broken or not at all what you thought you were getting? Have you done research for school but been frustrated because you think you might be getting bad information or you find different facts at different websites? Most of us have. That's why it's important to be a good detective when you're using internet resources. So let's talk about criteria to use to evaluate whether or not you're getting good information. There are six things to look for. Authority, accuracy, objectivity, currency, presentation, and purpose. Let's start with authority. This is probably the most important thing that you could look at with a website when you're doing research. It's crucial that you are able to tell who wrote the page. And why are they qualified to write the page? Are they an expert in their field? Any site that's up there for educational or scholarly reasons should have an author's name attached to it. Or, if not an, act an individual person, there might be an organization responsible for the information on the site. For example, a university. You might look to see if you can contact them in a way other than just email. Any um, professional who's putting out information on the web is going to list information about where their office is located with a street address and possibly a phone number. Next is accuracy. The information should always be error free and you should be able to verify what you're finding at the website through other trusted sources, maybe another website or something that's printed in a book. And something that always throws up a red flag for me is if a web page has spelling and grammar errors on it. Objectivity has to do with whether a site presents both sides of an issue and if it's free from bias. Now that's not always a huge deal. Some nonprofit organizations will have a website that is in favor of a certain posi position. For example, um, an animal welfare website would not be in favor, favor of using animals for scientific research and testing. If your project has to do with pros and cons of an issue, you do need to go to another website that might um, give the other side of that issue. And if there is advertising, it should be separate from the information that you're finding on the page. Currency. The great thing about using web resources is that you're getting information that's up to date, um, pages that are updated frequently, information that's very, very recent and current. And something else you might uh, look for is whether the links on a page work or not. Sometimes a page that has broken links is a page that's a little bit older. There should be some sort of copyright date on a web page that you're using for school. Presentation is not enormously important, um, but a site should be easy to navigate. There should be some sort of balance between text and graphics. And it's always nice if a website has a search box or an index that shows you where the information on their pages is located. And the last thing to look for is purpose. Why is the website there? Is it provided as a public service? Is it an educational site? Something just to entertain? Or perhaps there to sell a product? Alright, let's look at some examples. The first site I'm going to show you is um, called EarthSave, Healthy People, Healthy Planet. And what I notice first about this website is there are some links here, but it doesn't, the presentation is not great. Something's missing from here. I'm not quite sure what it is, but these links are not easy to get to. It's good that that does tell you something about the organization, and I noticed that it is a .org, which usually means it's a nonprofit organization. You might find sites that are .com, .edu, but a .edu or a .org site might have uh, better information on it. When I scroll down on this page, then, there's an article, World is Facing Natural Resources Crisis, 
And the next thing I notice is the date. 2008 is pretty old for a web-based article. This might not have up-to-date information. There's an author listed, Dan Childs, but I don't know anything about him and I wasn't able to find anything on the website. I even did a quick Google search about him, but he has a real common name and I couldn't find out that he was any kind of an expert. He may just be a reporter for this website. Then it goes on to mention um, an international study and an organization called Living Planet, but it's never clear to me from this article what study this is or what Living Planet is. So I, I don't think this is a great website to find the kind of information you would need for a school project. The next site I'm going to show you is called OncoLink and it's about cancer. It's cancer resources for pa patients and healthcare professionals. It has a great presentation, very attractive. It has these drop-down menus that are um, very well organized in alphabetical order. Shows you where to get to information on the website. Um, it has a search box. It, it, it does have a donate button here. I'm not quite sure why that's there, but that's not a, a big deal. And then if you scroll down on the page, it's got links to a lot of good articles, good information. And at the very bottom, it has other links that you can click on to get more information. And then this is real nice here at the bottom. Not only does it have a, a current copyright year, 2014, but it also tells you that this site is done by the University of Pennsylvania. So I think that this would be a good, good website to get information about cancer. Here's another site uh, with an article called Unhealthy Mountain Air. The presentation on this site isn't great. There's some links that you can click on. Um, it appears to be some sort of online newspaper, but I'm not real clear about that. Then it's um, talking about experts. It mentions doctors and other health officials. It talks about a state senate committee, um, officials at Great Smoky Mountains National Park, doctors and legislators, but it never gives names of these people or talks about who they are, so it doesn't really give you detailed information. Then if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see it has a pretty old date. Um, information about unhealthy air in the mountains of North Carolina that's from 2000. It's probably quite different from the information you would get now. This next site is pretty cool. It's about boilerplate, um, a robot that was built in the 1800s. And from this first page, you can see there's a book about boilerplate that you can buy on Amazon. There's some reviews here, a masterpiece, a delight, soon to be a major motion picture from J.J. Abrams. Then if you click on some of the links, you can see some pictures. Um, there's a timeline, boilerplate served as a soldier in all these different wars. Then, let's see, he even went to Antarctica. And you can scroll down and look at the pictures. There's a map. And as I started looking at these pictures, I began to think, this doesn't look quite right, does it? And after doing some reading, I found that this site is totally fake. There's nothing at all true about boilerplate. There isn't book at Amazon that you can buy that the people wrote about creating this fake website, but that's the only part of it that's real. All right, this is a website called Ban Dihydrogen Monoxide. It's talking about it being an invisible killer, um, the dangers of it, contamination, has a lot of facts and figures here, millions of dollars of property damage, must be stopped. It has some further findings. The web page has been visited a lot of times, but I'm not really sure about this copyright date, 1995-2XXX. Not sure what that means. There's no author's name attached to it at all. And if you start reading it then, you might become a little suspicious. We must stop Iran and North Korea from stockpiling DHMO from Secretary of State Jim Carrey. Well, the Secretary of State is John Kerry, K-E-R-R-Y. 
Then it has a quote down here from President Borak Obama, which is not at all how President Obama spells his name. Anyway, I looked this up and this too is a fake site. Dihydrogen monoxide is water. And this was created as an April Fool prank by a couple of DJs. All right, one quick word about Wikipedia. We all use Wikipedia. You can find some great information fast there. Um, teachers, however, will not allow you to use Wikipedia as a cited source for school research. And the reason for that has to do with authority. Wikipedia is a wiki, which means it can be edited by anyone. And whereas some studies show that most of the information you get on Wikipedia is accurate, there's just no way to be sure of that. Um, it's a good place to go to get background information on your topic. It, the presentation's great. It's got all these links. It's got an um, outline that you can click on. What's real good about Wikipedia is after you get some background information, there usually are links at the bottom that will take you to other websites that you will be able to use for school. Um, it'll give you scholarly journal articles to read. It'll give you other websites, people's home pages, where you can go and get the information yourself firsthand. All right. In another lesson, we'll talk about online sources that aren't websites and are bound to give you good information, like databases and the school's reference ebooks. But as you do web searching on your own, be sure to evaluate whether or not you're getting accurate, up-to-date information from the best possible sources.